All right, so with the holidays upon us, I thought it'd be cool to do a tutorial related to that. More in this case, related to the winter, in, in the sense that we're going to create animated snow inside Photoshop. And it's very similar to a, a tutorial I did a while back on creating animated rain. I'm just going to change a few things about how we do that just to, to achieve this effect. So here I have an image. It's a winter wonderland. No, actually, it's just a main street area of a town, and I just want to enhance the holiday effect by adding some falling snow here. We can see that there's snow on the ground, but I want to see the snow falling. So I'm going to go over here and create a new blank layer on this image, and I'm just going to press Shift-Delete to open up the Fill dialog here. Just going to use 50% gray and click OK. And do want to make sure that your default color swatches are set. Just uh, hit the D key on your keyboard, and it will do that. Then go to the filter menu, go to noise, add noise. And I'm going to take the amount to the full amount, going all the way up to 400. And for the distribution, we're going to use Gaussian. And we're going to have the monochromatic checked on. So let's go ahead and click OK. And there we have our noise. So the next thing we're going to do is go under the filter and go down to blur and choose Gaussian blur. I'm going to give it a very small blur, about a two pixel blur here. And this is a little bit more than we did when we created the rain because we want to get, we want this to not look like so much of, you know, very fine points of, or fine dots of uh, water, like rain. We want it to look like very fluffy pieces of snow. So, click OK, and now I'm going to bring up my levels. Let's go into the image menu to adjustments, and choose levels. And we're going to take the dark slider, shadow slider, push it in uh, quite a bit towards the middle there, and we'll take the highlight slider and bring it in. And just going to balance this really got to kind of play with these sliders until this starts to look like snow, and that actually does starting to look like snow there. Looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to animate this using it as a layer style or a pattern that I'm going to define. Well, I want to make sure that the pattern itself doesn't have any seams in it. So I'm going to go into the filter menu and go into Other, and we're going to choose Offset. And we want to move the vertical offset. By default, these will be set to zero. But if I move the vertical one just a little bit, you can see we've got a line here. And that's where the edges have come together because we're basically moving this in a tile fashion. And that's where our seam is. So I'm going to click OK. And let's take our rubber stamp tool with a good size soft edge brush. I'm just going to sample an area of the image and just kind of brush that in, just so it blends a little bit more, so there's not an obvious line or seam there. And since we're dealing with a pattern like this, it's just not, not going to be all that obvious. So once that is done, let's go into the Edit menu and go down here to Define Pattern. Go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this layer off. I could go ahead and throw it away, but you never know when you're going to want to modify it or change it in some way. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Then go ahead and create a new blank layer. And again, as we did before, I'm going to press Shift-Delete, use 50% gray, and there we have that. <clears throat> now, I'm going to add the layer style to this image. Let's go into the Effects menu and go down here to Pattern Overlay. And inside here, inside the Pattern menu, we're going to go and look for the snow that we defined right here. So there we have that. And if I keep this window open and move it to the side and go into my image and just hold down my Shift key and move up and down, you can see that I can move the pattern up and down in a way that looks like falling snow. So the effect is there. Let's make it look like actual snow. Well, you're probably thinking, well, it's not blending with the background. Quite simply, since we know the snow is white and the background is black, we'll change the blend mode to screen, and it will blend in there. Now, what it's doing is blending with that 50% gray we filled on this layer. Simply need to go to Blending Options and take the fill opacity down to zero, and that will only affect that fill in that layer, but the layer style itself, which in this case is the pattern, is still there. If we move this over and move this, let's grab that move tool, go back to the pattern overlay, and if we just move this, hey, it looks like falling snow. Cool. All right, so let's, na let's now animate that. Let's open up the animation panel. Again, this is both in CS3 extended and CS4 extended, and my animation window is huge. And let's just move that, make it a little bit smaller. All right, so we've got our layer highlighted. Let's twirl down and reveal our animation properties. And I'm going to put a keyframe by clicking on the uh, stopwatch here at the beginning of the timeline for the style, because that's what we're animating is that style, which is the pattern overlay. And I'm going to take my playhead and move it across the, let's do it to about the four second mark here. 
and we need to go back inside that layer style. I'm just going to double click on the name pattern overlay here. And here's what I'm going to do. Inside the image, I'm going to move this window to the side. I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm going to start at the very top of the image and simply drag down. I'm going to do this three times. Two and three. And once I click OK, notice what happens in the timeline. It has gone ahead and put a new keyframe there. And if I move this over, you'll see and hit my spacebar, it'll render the frames and we have what looks like falling snow. Now, this is pretty good and all, but there's one thing. It's falling straight down. It really looks almost looks like a snow pattern. And I really want to kind of have it, you know, as snow falls, it kind of has turbulence, you know, and there's wind and air and it's just kind of moving around in different directions as it's falling. This tends to look like it's falling straight down, which would be okay. I, I'd be fine with that, but I want to take it a little bit further. So I need a new, create a new file the same size as this one. So let's go ahead and just duplicate this. And I'm going to go ahead and flatten it. And let's go ahead and fill it with black. Or actually, you don't need to fill it with anything. Because what we're going to do is go into the filter menu and go to render and choose clouds. I don't like that arrangement. And if you, do, if you do render clouds and you don't like it, just do it again and it will distribute it a little bit differently every time. Until you get, I'm just going to hit command F until I get. What I'm looking for is a nice distribution of contrast across the whole image. Just to give an idea, I think that'll work. All right, so I'm going to go into the filter menu and go to blur and give this about a 10 pixel blur. Actually, that's a little bit too much. Let's do about a seven. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, simple cloud fill layer, run a blur on it. We're going to do go to file, save as, and we'll call it displace. You can name it whatever you like. Just want to, it's just going to be a displacement map that we're going to use. I'm just going to save that to the desktop, close it, and we're back on our original image. Now, what I want to do here is apply that displacement, displacement map to this layer. However, if I do that, it's going to not going to work properly because of this layer style that we've got applied here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enclose all this inside of a, a smart object. So I'm going to control or right click right on this layer and go to convert to smart object. And the beauty of this is not only is it not going to affect the original layer, but it's going to apply the filters as smart filters. So we'll be able to edit these even after we've applied them. You'll notice when I converted it to a smart object that it went back to the, the standard black and white fill. Well, that's simply a matter of changing the layers blend mode back to screen. And we should have our animated snow. There we have it. So let's just go into the filter menu, go to distort, displace. Let's give it a good size uh, distortion here. We'll start with 25. Actually, no, I'm going to take it down a little bit. Let's go about 20. Stretch to fit, wrap around, let's go ahead and click OK. It's going to ask me to find that file, which is right there. We'll click open, and you'll notice what happened. The, the snow is a little distorted now as it falls through. I'm going to go ahead and take this to the beginning, narrow my work area to the four seconds we're using here, and hit my spacebar. And you'll notice a little bit differently from before, the snow is falling, but it's kind of twisting and winding around that displacement map as it goes, giving me a little bit more realistic look of falling snow. It's got that air turbulence going through there and everything looks pretty good. So it'll be finished rendering here. And there we have very cool winter snow right there inside Photoshop. And again, as I mentioned, you can do this in both CS4 extended and CS3 extended using the new animation feature.